Hey Virgo, welcome into your 2020 forecast. Let me get some. Whoa. Or your 2020 forecast. Um, the way we're doing it is we're going to do just general energies for the month. It's very broad, it's very general, and we just do like a quick uh, little capsule into every single month. Uh, and then oracle cards we pull for each quarter. So they're going to be very general because there's thousands of you guys out there. And not to mention, these energies can play out in any way, shape, or form for you. All right, so let's see. First quarter, what's going on here? Overall message is the five of uh, wands in reverse, the justice in reverse, the hermit. Here you are. All right, and the strength card. So first quarter is all about you overcoming some blocks, obstacles, and challenges, something that wasn't fair to you. Others of you, you might have been in court recently and you might have had a loss. Um, for you, there was also these blocks and challenges that you finally overcame. You just felt like shit, shit wasn't fair to you. This is like energies that are carrying on from 2021 into 2022. Now, in January, I have the Emperor in Aries. doesn't have to be, but it's somebody that is also older than you, an entrepreneur, a business person. This can also talk about taking control of your life. Uh, Ten of Rods. This is obstacles, blocks, challenges. Seven of Rods. Resistance of some kind. And Five of uh, Cups. So in January, you are looking at something here, Virgo, where you're... Um, disappointed over the, the past I mean something wasn't fair something and, and you know you're very defensive now and, and you could be dealing with this Aries person doesn't have to be others of you you're trying to gain control of your life but you're just you know you're dealing with all these burdens somebody put burdens and responsibilities on your plate I feel like let me see what's these ten of rods here for Virgo in January Somebody's not talking to you or, or somebody's like doing the silent treatment. I don't know. Something like that. And you're not speaking to each other right now. And it's stressing you out. You have anxiety. I think this is somebody you had an on and off, uh, on and off again situation. I think it's one of you wanted to get married, maybe potentially for some of you, or you were hoping it would go in that direction. Um, but I see that there's like some stress for somebody you're not talking to and you're a little bit disappointed in over the person's actions or, you know, you're very defensive or they're very defensive with you in January. That's the overall messages I'm getting there. Now in February, you do have the high priestess. This is you using your intuition and big changes are coming to you that are faded. What is this high priestess, please? Yeah, you're remaining focused, though, um, on your life. And some of you might be going back or someone might be coming back towards you in regards to love. It can also be, yeah, it can also be Cancer Pisces Scorpio. But here at the bottom of the deck in February, you're nursing a broken heart. Or somebody is. Yeah, somebody left. You could have left. They could have left. Somebody left. But guess what? somebody comes back maybe you are dealing with cancer cancer's here and pisces is here this is like heavy water sign um but this is in regards to somebody that you were not talking to might return back to you and quite quickly in february and this is definitely in regards to love because the queen of pentacles is here in the eight of cups in reverse somebody walking back in regards to love and here's a cancer card and charging right ahead but High Priestess is the Pisces card. This is faded to you because of the Wheel of Fortune here. Let's see what's going on in March. In March, you have the King of Wands in reverse. This is a fire sign that is not stable. Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, unstable. Um, but you have a passion and new beginning with this person, which means a lot of boom, boom. But Six of Swords is here, the Queen of Swords is here, and the King of Pentacles. Interesting. So here you are, Virgo. This is your card. Others of you, this could be you dealing with another Earth sign like yourself, Capricorn, Virgo, Taurus. Um, and you're having a passionate new beginning. You definitely leave somebody here behind. Okay, and but you're using your rationale to make the decision that you're making. Okay, because I feel like you're the queen of swords. 
Queen of Swords is analytical. She's rational. She's logical. She uses her mind. She doesn't use her heart chakra. She tells her heart, shut the fuck up. We got to think of the right thing to do here right now. Okay, Virgo? <laughs> this is you talking to yourself. <laughs> um, let's see. What's going on here? Um, March. Why is the Queen of Swords here? Yeah, you're trying to debate who's the right lover. Because lovers is a choice. Look at you. You're working really hard on yourself and your craft. Lovers in reverse. You're trying to see who to work with. That is the most efficient partner for you, Virgo. And this comes down to you in uh, first quarter. Virgo, first quarter. What do you have for them? Free yourself. You're this beautiful unicorn in a cage. And you need to free yourself. For sure, some of you have new love. It is safe for you to love. Because I told you, love comes back to you in February. Okay, It's going to be safe. But the only issue I don't like here is codependency. Codependency tells me that somebody here needs, whether this is you or the person that you're dealing with, codependency is never healthy. Why? Because it's like that person depends on their external environment to make them happy. Like they need them like a substance abuse. You know, like people who are on who need drugs or alcohol or whatever to cope. They use other people to, for their own personal coping mechanisms. That, that's how the fuck is that happy? Making anyone happy. That means like you're responsible for their happiness. But you're not. We're responsible for our happiness. Our own happiness. Maybe our children. But that's about it. You're not responsible for their happiness. Nor should they be for you. And that's what codependency talks about. So you want to be careful of that in the first quarter. Um, that that's not why you want to be with them. Because it's meant to be two individuals coming together who want to wake up in the morning, have a cup of coffee, and share the fucking news. Or what they did the day before. And not be responsible for it. It's like, um, I think I read it somewhere. I'm like... Just because I want, like, I think I read this somewhere online. Just because I, I, I want, because I want my man to call me two or three times a day to tell me what he's up to. It doesn't mean that I'm obsessed. It just means it shows respect. No, it doesn't. It shows codependency. It's like you require that in order to make you feel comfortable. That's codependency. And I remember having this argument with her, and I'm like, you know. The, the person comes to me like a few weeks later. I didn't, did I say read this? I I was, I read this a while ago and she comes to me like a month after that and she's like, you know what? You were right. It is codependency because I tried as an experiment to not do that. And I realized I was a different, I found my individuality this way. Interesting. Okay, work-wise, any advice? Detox your friendships. <laughs> Shit, I was just feeling that right now. Detox your friends. You might be rubbing shoulders with the wrong people. You know, especially when you see people who are unstable. Misery loves company. Get rid of those people, okay? There's nothing you can learn from them. They're only energy suckers. And you don't need an energy vampire. You need to piece them out. You want to change your friends. Anybody negative or persistently telling you what to do or has constant opinions of you or is a narcissist. So fucking unhealthy. You need to elevate yourself in life. So go talk to business men and women. Go talk to a, um, a different group of people. Hang out at different bars, restaurants. Do Change your circle. You need to detox your friends, okay? Because you, if you, if you want to elevate yourself even work-wise, you want to rub shoulders with people that are the experts in your field. It is safe for you to receive. Yeah, some of you think you're, it's not worth you... You're, you're under asking, maybe at work, maybe for a bonus, maybe something. And you're like, it's saying you, you earned what you're getting here, Virgo. You earned it. It's, accept it. It's good. Partnership. Yeah, a lot of you are coming into a business partnership. Because sometimes for me, lovers is also a business partnership. It's not just love. And it's a choice, obviously. Do you want to work with them or not? Because to me, sometimes that's what this is. This is working on your craft with somebody in a business partnership. And the King of Pentacles is talking about financial stability. So there is something here for you guys in the first quarter where you can partner up business-wise with somebody. Kipper, what do you have? Okay. 
community. Yeah, this is what I was just talking about. Detox your friends. This is talking about your community. Uh, I don't know. Say you're Italian or you're Italian American. You have that kind of community. Say you're a doctor. Your community is doctors and nurses and that's it. You're an actor. You're a band of actors. That's your community. Okay. And courtship. You're being courted into a different community. I feel like. Oh, it's very promising. Virgo. All right. Let's get into second quarter for you guys. April for Virgo, April. May for Virgo, May 2022, May please. Some of you are dealing with an Aries, does not have to be. It could be somebody that's older than you, an entrepreneur, a business person. Actually, can I have more for April? All right, so overall theme is the Six of Cups. Second quarter, you're going to be dealing with some kind of nostalgia from your recent past here, okay? It could also talk about a soulmate uh, and because you're reviewing your options um, over something that might be balanced for you. And balanced for you is stability, whether that's financial or in love. So now in April, you're dealing with uh, an Aries where that's their birthday. It doesn't have to be. It could be somebody that's older than you. Big age gap there. Uh, this person has children, um, is very controlling, has their own empire, has their own business. Uh, the page of coins. You're getting an offer from this uh, Aries person, okay, to birth something into this world, whether it's a child, a marriage, or a company, or a business. It is the opportunity to birth something into this world. Now, I would be remiss to tell you that this is the most beautiful pairing I have ever seen in my life for an April reading. This is a power couple. The Emperor and the Empress. There's pages, which are kids, and they're delivery boys and girls. There are knights. They are messengers, and they do the work for the kings and the queens. Then there's the kings and the queens who report to the Emperor and the Empress. Okay, that's a fucking power couple. That's like Beyonce Jay-Z status. <laughs> okay? And it's the page of coins is there. That's an offer. So that can be a child. That can be a job. That can be a company. That can be a marriage. It can be anything. It is production of something big into this world. And you are about to not only meet your counter half, um, but you're dealing with your counter half here in April. Creating some kind of empire. That is the ultimate cards you would ever want to see. The Tower, the Page of Cups, the Fool in Reverse, the Four of Pentacles, the Ace of Pentacles in the world. Okay. And then here we are. The Page of Coins, the Page of Coins. The Page of Coins also talks about, you know, sometimes like learning something brand new. Okay. Like, um, yeah, look, pages over here, children. Uh, others of you, this is like going back to school and learning a craft, but... I digress. The tower is something that is shocking. It comes out of nowhere. This is like poof. This is like huge. This is like, because I was saying, I was like, what is this? Like, I go, that's a little weird for an April reading because your first quarter had all this weird semi tumultuous stuff going on. This happens out of nowhere for you in April. Okay. And it begins a new chapter in your life. Poof, collapse of an old life. Boom, here's a new life. Faded. A new beginning. The only thing I do not like here is that you're clinging on to something. And this is why you have the Six of Cups here. You're being nostalgic in the second quarter about your first quarter. You're being nostalgic and you're clinging on to something or someone. And you're not taking a leap of faith into this new thing. The universe is, you know, there's an offer here. And the universe, I won't let this go by. 
So you're having a huge month in April. Huge month. What's this three of uh, wands and the three of cups in reverse? That's third party situation. But you don't do it. Okay. Taurus card, the Empress. Anything else? A lot of you, yeah, you might be having children in the second quarter, getting pregnant. A lot of you. I mean, it's, it's I don't know how else to read this. She's pregnant. There's the child. But you're waiting for your ships to come in. You're waiting for something to happen there. And the third, because the two threes is third party situation. But the reconciliation is in reverse, which means it's a no go. Other, this sometimes is talking about taking a matter into your hands on a serious level. You're waiting on something. I don't know. Baby daddy over there? Somebody from your past? Because you are clinging on here in April. Um, and But the Three of Cups in Reverse is talking about not doing a third-party situation. What's the Three of Cups in Reverse, please? Yeah, somebody that you're not talking to, that you were slowly working towards a relationship with somebody in the past, but you're not talking to them, and you're trying to make a decision here because you're clinging on to them. Some of you, this could be a business partner. Others of you, this is somebody you wanted to marry. Others of you, this is wanting to start a family with kids. There's some something complicated goes on here between April and May. Not so much in June. You let that tower go. It's like you have an ending of some kind here and the tower in reverse. You have an ending, but it's you're not letting a foundation fall apart. It doesn't fucking matter because what happens is this new love comes in towards you. Look at this. Queen of Cups. June is beautiful. This is love. This is Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio, but love comes to you. To you because I feel like that is you. Your heart chakra opens. And I think because of the planetary alignments, uh, this is things are shifting for you. Your love life blossoms right around June. It does for everybody, actually, for the whole collective, right around April, May, June. Um, so this is fresh new love. This isn't the opportunity of new love. Somebody comes in and communicates that to you, and you become a couple. You both feel like soulmates. There's an ending with somebody else here, but you haven't completely let it go in a weird way. So I don't know if this is somebody that you were just clinging on to, and then it works itself out here, or um, you finally finish off some kind of third-party situation here. Yeah, you come in from out of the cold. But the sun in reverse is also not seeing something um, in the light of day. Um, it almost feels like a weird bittersweet situation goes on here for you. You have an ending. And you're sad that there's an ending here with somebody. But you're in from out of the cold. Because you take on this new love in July. And you move on. Good for you. You manifested this. <laughs> With the magician. Uh, second quarter. For my Virgo, please. What's going on here? Forgiving and learning. Yep, as you forgive, you can release your past and let it go. Like flushing the toilet. <laughs> uh, express your love is here. Yeah, I mean, I think you are. Hi, how are things? Wedding. Yeah, for a lot of you, this is you. Some of you are dealing with a wedding, but I don't know. I feel like for most of you, this wedding situation here, for me, it is safe for you to love. Yeah, I feel like this is uh, something that you're going towards. And I think this has been your goal and your agenda anyway, Virgo, for 2022. You're like, I think work is all right, but you know what? I want to stabilize my love life. All right? You might be starting some kind of new projects, too, that you're a little bit nervous about, but it looks like it's going to be a good fit for you. Deservingness is here again. Yeah. What the fuck? You guys deserve what you're you're earning. You're getting here in, in business. You oh, oh, Release yourself you, to, to the spirit guides. You... you, you you deserve what you're earning here. Accept it. 
uh, clean energy food. Be careful of the, your diet here. This to talk about like we have a soul, right? This bag of skin, this is our temple. This is the temple that protects the soul inside. If we feed it garbage, that is our soul. We are telling our soul, you're garbage. And when you feed it clean and healthy food, you're also telling it you are clean and healthy and you are brilliant. I'm not saying don't have your cheat days. We all do that. You know, it's like a guilty pleasure. We got to feed the, the, the skin sack too, <laughs> the temple. But honestly, we got to feed mostly the soul. Not only that, there's certain foods that we call brain food. It helps you see clear, clearly to making decisions in life. All right, so let's see what the Kipper has to say. Kipper, there's a false person in your midst, main female. If you're a female watching this, this is you. This is your reading. If you're a male watching this, this is about your female. Um, high honors. Yeah, you deserve this. You're receiving some kind of kudos at work here and high honors. And you're going to become officiated somehow this second quarter. Careful of fake friends because we were talking earlier about detoxing friendships. You got some fake friends here you got to take care of. And coffin, which I like, which means you're putting an end to it. Finally, in this point, this point in time, in your second quarter, you put an end to, to those toxic fake fuckers, whoever they are. You could tell them, Virgo. My tarot reader said you're a fucker and I have to detox you. <laughs> no, seriously, you really have no idea what an impact it has on your life. Um, I'll share a story with you uh, while I'm setting up third quarter. My sister, when she was getting a divorce from her ex-husband, she said to herself, like, she's like, you know what? I'm getting remarried in a year. She, she just got divorced. I'm like, what are you talking about? And she's like, yeah, I'm, I'm getting remarried next year. I'm going to find my person and that's that. And she, she, that's exactly what happened. She met somebody nine months later and they were talking marriage. And then she got married to the person. Ten years later, she's with the same person. Here's another thing that she told me. She goes, those people that she used to hang out with her ex-husband, she's like, they were so toxic. I can't believe I was letting them talk to me, give me advice, go out with them. They were just bringing me down. She goes, so when I changed my environment, I started hanging out with new people, different people. That's how she met her new husband. She's like, I realized these friends weren't helping me. And she goes, so when I made new friends, my new friends introduced me to my new husband. That's my point. When you make healthy relationships, you never know where it can take you and where it can lead you. How do I do that? There we go. I mixed decks. All right. Let's see what's going on here. Universe Angel Spirit Guides, what do we have for... July for Virgo, July. August. September. Overall third quarter messages are the world. You start a new chapter, baby. King of Wands is under here, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, and the Knight of Coins. So slow and steady. You're having, you have, you, bleh. you're having a slow burn with this fire sign. You know, like it's like this on and off, break up, break up, like on again, off again. There's somebody here is coming with a heartbreak. Okay, because look at this, the Queen of Wands, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, or a passionate person, coming with a heartbreak, heartache, but slowly coming back towards you again. And there's the fire sign. That's the couple. That's you. That's the passion that you have between you and the new cycle that you're about to begin in third quarter. So you have healing, four of swords. You have the page of cups. This is an emotional offer. It's a small one. It's like, hey, what's up? But you get it. It's a little bit more than that, but nine of pentacles, you're single here. And th this is all about you. In, uh, where are we? July? Yes, about your individuality, your 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 financial independence and your actual independence in relationships. But you're going towards your wish fulfillment and somebody gives you this offer. That's the wish fulfillment, whatever or whoever is giving this to you. 
and it helps heal you. So, Universe Angel Spirit Guides, please help me clarify this for Virgo in July. The King of Wands. Wow. Really? They collaborate with you. That's your wish fulfillment. This is what happens to you in July. You and this fire sign collaborate with each other. Now, in August, you have the Six of Wands and the Four of Wands. These are two beautiful cards. I couldn't ask for anything more. This is getting engaged. This is moving in. This is buying a house. This is success on your foundation, whether this is your career also. Success, foundation, marriage, engagement, proposal. What's this Four of Wands? Virgo, you, justice, court, foundation. Yeah, something comes to light. No more, no longer being disappointed over the past. Uh, you are trying to make a wise choice because you feel like you don't have all the answers, but this there's something here that's fair and balanced for you. But you do feel stuck. I suppose you feel stuck because you don't have all the answers. You have a little bit of fear of the unknown. Um, death in reverse. Yeah, something didn't actually die, which is this fire sign. So let's see August. August is the Seven of Swords, the Eight of Swords, and the High Priestess. Okay, somebody's not talking about the elephant in the room in August in regards to whatever the Seven of Swords is. What's the Seven of Swords? Seven of Swords is cheating. It's my fuckery card. Lying, stealing, ghosting. Yeah, the, yeah, this is definitely cheating. Um, somebody younger than you, more immature than you. I don't know, but in August, this is... It, the, the high priestess is that you are going to sense that somebody here is cheating on you. you it, it's like uh, you sense it, okay? Because this is instinctual. And this is what happens to you in August. So I'm not going to fucking sugarcoat your reading. Because you know what? Now you know what you need to watch out for at the end of summer. This is stepping out. This is a hit it, quit it. This is cheater. This is a one night stand. This is the seven of swords. This is cheating. You instinctually pick this up. Your intuition tells you, oh my God. And now you feel stuck here. And the page of wands, the, a younger person is involved. That's August energy. This could be you too. You could be doing it. You're like, no, I would never do that. Love is blind. Love makes us do stupid shit. Third quarter. Oh, God, unrequited love. I don't like this playfulness and healing family issues. Do I didn't want to see this. I really didn't. Someone's wearing a false mask. Someone's cheating. Unrequited love. That's because somebody's holding on to you for either because they're codependent on you or for financial reasons or for moral reasons. I don't know. And But somebody, because of the unrequited love, somebody steps out here. They get all kinds of playful. Get all kind of like Romeo, Romeo. But healing family issues is here. I hate saying this to you. I really, truly do. But forewarned is forearmed. Now, power of prayer, gratitude list. This is your focus on your priorities. This is for uh, abundance work. Okay, so in the third quarter, you're going to have to focus on your priorities. And the best way you can do that is by creating a list. And, you know, power of prayer, sometimes, like, if you can't find the answer you seek, just by meditating or praying for it, it might come to you. It might come to you in a dream or it just might come to you in some other way, shape or form. But you need to create a gratitude list for the things that you do have and, you know, think, and how far you've come. Virgo, okay? Focus on what's more important to you. Don't get scattered. And positive uh, power of prayer is here. Let's see what the uh, Kipper deck has for you guys. Kipper, what you got? Third quarter. Mature man is here. Family room is here. Mean male is here. Oof. Ooh, mean female at the bottom of the deck. Yeah, a lot of you here, if, you, if you're a, a male watching this, a male Virgo watching this, this is you. This is actually you in this reading. 
uh, if you're a female watching this, this is about your main man right there. All right, and then there's a mature man here that's involved. A mature man for me is an older uncle. He's dad, he's he's actually granddad. This is a 60, 70, 80 year old person mature man. This is like grandfather. I say this because family room is here. So this is somebody who's advising you. So they could be giving you good advice. Um, nothing to be worried about because it's not coupled with bad health here. It's coupled with family room. So this is a family member that's a mature man in your life that is here to advise you. Could be also your Aries person that's older than you. You're dating a mature man and that's your main man. All right, so let's move on to, where are we? Fourth quarter. Careful what's going on for you guys here. I don't like it. We are where? September? No, October, November, December. Let's see what's going on here. October. Your intuition kicks into overdrive in October. I'm sorry. Yeah, because of what happened to you in August and September. So this is October, and now we're doing October, November, December. It kicks into overdrive. So from the previous month that you had the intuition card, it rolls over into the next month. Okay. Um, let's see. What is November saying? Wow. A lot about you. So you're dealing a lot with this person with passion or passionate person. And they're a common thread throughout your year in 2022. And it is a fire sign for a lot of you. If it's not fire, it's just somebody very passionate. Somebody that you have a, a, a lot of chemistry with on a passionate level. All right, so let me see what's going on. Overall theme for the last quarter is the devil. There's something toxic here. What's toxic is the cheating, is the lying is the ghosting, is the stealing, is the garbage. And Eight of Swords. I hate to say this, but that's what's toxic. That's the toxic situation. Can also be a Capricorn. Now, in October, you are single here, potentially. Others of you, this is your financial dependence. You're working on your financial dependence, looking for your stability, because that is you right there. That is the Earth sign female, Queen of Pentacles, nurturing, loving, and caring. But your intuition's in overdrive right now. Like, hard hard what is this uh high priestess please no one can sleep on you nobody can sleep on the high priestess are they crazy <laughs> she knows everything she's stoic she's mysterious she knows things and she just keeps it shut you know quiet so you're aware of, of what's going on in your life here so you stop working towards it and again this can be work related so you stop working towards your craft your hobby or whatever this thing is that you were doing uh and you were torn as to what decision to make. Sorry about that, that's outside. Give me a moment, I'm gonna also close my door and wait for the honking to stop. Hey Virgo, okay, let's get into your um, fourth quarter. Nine of Pentacles, the Queen of Coins, and the High Priestess. All right, so the energies are carrying on from the fall, from the previous month for you in October. You're in, in, intuitively picking up that you know about this cheating thing. You're intuitively picking it up. Okay, because you are who the fuck you are, <laughs> stable and grounded. Um, but this leads you to be single. Others of you, this is you talking about your financial groundedness. All right, looking for your own financial independence and using your intuition. Some of you might be doing some spiritual practicing too uh, at this time in um, October. Um, but there is something to be said here uh, with 
you have an obsession about if this is love related and why you're single here because you intuitively picked up that somebody was cheating on you. I mean, I don't know if this is you either too, but your only obsession is that you're waiting for them to come back. Devil, three of wands, waiting for somebody to come back. And you're torn. On one side, you're like, do I wait for them? And on the other side, which is the other sword, do I stop working towards this situation? Others of you, this is, this is talking about you not working towards something in, uh, financially. All right, and doing something separately on your own. Now, let's see what's going on here in um, November. You have, you definitely have some kind of ending. Your foundation collapses, whether it's a marriage or a relationship. Boom, bye. Goodbye, over, it's over. You weren't ending it, so the universe took it from you. Um, again, there's a fire sign here that's relevant, and I don't know, guys, for you, some of you, this fire sign can be the catalyst to your marriage, uh, or it's vice versa, but this is the common thread I'm seeing. You're dealing with this fire sign or this passionate person, very passionate, like there's like a lot of heat and passion coming off of this card and this person, so that's why I'm saying it doesn't have to be an Aries Leo Sagittarius, it's just some kind of chemistry you have with them on a passionate level, also sexual. Um... But in any event, it's the two of cups. You both find each other to be soulmates here. So you do have an ending somewhere. And then you have a coupling up here. Sometimes that's a business partnership, okay? Because you have the three of pentacles here. So this is you collaborating with somebody on some kind of work project. And you partner up. But if this is somebody that you're trying to work with in a relationship. For me to see a three of pentacles, that means some shit went down that you need to work on. All right, and this is a person that was divinely guided to you by Archangel Michael. Archangel Michael's the protector of relationships. That is him right here overlooking this, this couple. Okay, you're trying to restore balance. At some point, you were juggling a situation. I have two cards of, you know, balance. Juggling two situations, trying to see which one is the best fit. Another one, a scale. You're like trying to give each section its own fair due so you can keep both balls in the air, but it's not sustainable. So two cards of balance telling me because you don't have all the answers. So that's why you're trying to do both in November. Okay, you're trying to be cerebral, logical. Some of you could be dealing with a Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. Also, that could be the other person. An air sign and a fire sign. Um, but this is about, you know, you walking away from something that doesn't work for you and going towards love. Because you're trying to make a judgment call here with all these balancing cards. For sure. Uh, but you do. You move quickly towards love. All right. Let's see what's going on here for um, December. December is clarified by the three of wands. Here you are again waiting. Waiting for true love. This is also love, the Ace of Cups, Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio, but, and Four of Swords, healing. Um, in the Virgo card, that's you, and finding your strength to use your internal wisdom. Now, some of you, I feel like this could be work-related because it was clarified by the Seven of Pentacles. You've invested into something, and now you're waiting for the, the fruitful return, like the, the harvest to come in, whatever it is that you sponsored over there. Um... Others of you, the, and then I clarified the Queen of Cups. It was clarified by the King of Wands, Three of Pentacles, and the Six of Cups in reverse. Yeah, you're trying to forget the past and collaborate with this King of Wands here. You're like, okay, uh, the pa you're overlooking it. You're overlooking the past. What had happened in the past stays in the past. You're overlooking it, and you're trying to collaborate with this fire sign. And then I pulled some romance angels. I'm sorry, because the, the camera went down, and... I just opened it and I didn't want to reshuffle because they were already laid out. You're just going to have to trust me. You have new love here. So this is you collaborating with this person on a new love uh, situation. Let your friends help you. You can't do it alone sometimes because I see you doing this. I see you being like yourself, clamming up, being a hermit, taking a time out and keeping it to yourself. You can get a different perspective from your friends. All right. Stay optimistic about your love life is here. What was at the bottom of the deck? Yeah, you have romantic feelings. Reconciliation. That's what the Three of Pentacles says to me it is. All right. 
Yeah, and this is what I was feeling before. Donations, tithing, and charitable work. I feel like some of you are working with charities, donations. In the last quarter, you might have invested in a charity here, and you're waiting for some kind of return here. Uh, if not, it's saying this is something you should do, something you should think about doing, working with charities or whatnot. Let's see what your uh, Kipper has to say for your last quarter here. No, just one more, please. Let me see what this is. Whatever, I'll take it. If it popped, it popped. All right, occupation. Yes, this is in your fourth quarter. It is talking about your... See, when... Ugh. This is a card in December that tells me waiting for your ships to come in. And the Seven of Pentacles is showing me the time and energy you invested into something. Occupation just tells me the whatever it is that you're working on, your occupation. This isn't an overly like, oh, filthy rich card or a poor card. It means the mundane nuances that you're pouring into your occupation, whatever you're doing. Which tells me it's something probably new. Again, that's why I'm probably seeing that charity there. Um, you're starting something new. You're igniting something new. And you might have a partner you're doing it with. Um, because it's putting you on a pathway. Pathway for me is a two, three year card. That means you're put on the path to something new. And this is going to take you down a different journey. A long one. This isn't short. Now marriage is also here. A lot of you are going on a pathway towards marriage. Or getting married or getting engaged this is the new pathway and this is in December here's how interesting I love Kipper little it's so always on point this is talking about you receiving a gift from somebody and it usually means by the next holiday but it's also the Yuletide card so it makes it's it's fitting that it's falling in your last quarter because this is Christmas time so this time next year at Christmas time you're going to be receiving something here of great value of great fortune Huge. This is huge. This is a lot of money. Great fortune. You're going to get it in a message of some kind. So you could be marrying somebody and great fortune comes in with this. Um, you're definitely embarking on a new life, on a new path uh, this time next year. It's like, um, it's like this, right? So 2022 for you is you're going through the forest. You're going through the thicket of all the shit of your life and you're cutting down shrubs and leaves and brushes and you're clearing out the pathway you're clearing out a road that finally by the end of next year you're at the clearing you're at the end of the forest and you're on your path you're on your way you're on your journey because of the shit you have to go through in 2022 but it becomes a lot easier for you you set a road you set a temperature you set a path Let's see, any other advice you have for uh, Virgo for um, 2022, please? The energy is gaining momentum, absolutely, and adjustments are required. So this is your 2022 advice, adjustments are required. Um, a little tweaking here, a little tweaking there, especially when I see occupation and the energy is gaining momentum. It's exactly what I'm saying. It's like taking like a little tiny rubber band, right? And you turn it into a ball and then you get another uh, rubber band and then you, you layer it on top and then you keep layering it and then the ball increases and it gets larger and then it eventually rolls on its own. So the energy is gaining momentum. This is what you're doing in 2022. You're starting a small ball and you're growing and you're growing and you're growing that at some point when you push it to let it roll, it clears the path for you. You just gotta initiate it. So it's gaining momentum. So the things that you've sparked up as far as thoughts and relationships in 2021, sure, a lot of it carries over in 2022, but you're clearing out the dead ends, the dead leaves, and you're on your way. All right, Virgo, this is what I have for you. I will see you next year and happy new year.